Please welcome dermatologist Dr. Mercy Odeyungbo. Dr. Mercy, thank you so much for joining us. Well, this show is about loving the skin you're in, and that has obviously many, many meanings. But for you and how you approach your patients, you reach their hearts, and you also talk about the mental health component of this. Were you expecting this when you went to school to study dermatology? No, they actually don't teach you this in medical school or in residency. But, you know, one thing that I've always realized is you can't just treat the skin condition, you also have to treat the patient as a whole. If not, you're only doing half of the job. There's a connection between skin disease and mental health. So we have to tackle both of that to really make sure that the patients are at their best. So if they didn't teach you this in medical school, where did you learn to approach the mental health component of it and understand how people are so impacted by their skin, whether it's a teenager who has a bad case of acne and feels that they're not beautiful, or they, you know, to the most extreme cases, which you deal with on that show? I think one of the biggest things is having a lot of family members that were sick um, and following them to their medical appointments and having and watching doctors treat them and diagnose them. And I always said, if I had the chance to do something different, you have to get to the underlying core of a person. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that person as a whole. If not, something is still missing. The patients leave and they're so confused about their diagnosis. They're so confused about the whole visit that actually you're not really helping them. When you were approached to do this show, I'm curious, were you worried, okay, I want to show these cases, I want to highlight these cases, but I also can't let these people be exploited or on TV just so the rest of us can look at them. How did you balance that intention to protect your patients and help us all understand what they were experiencing? So all of these patients, first of all, are so courageous to expose themselves. Yeah. Um, as you know, you know, when I would see this patient, so when you guys see me getting the patient, that was the first time I'm meeting them. Yeah. So sometimes when the camera was off, I'll kind of talk to the patients and let them know, you only have to show me what you're comfortable showing me. Wow. You only have to talk about what you're comfortable talking about. And I think that puts the patients at ease and it made them comfortable. And they actually want to share their story so they can help other people that have similar conditions. Let me ask you, is it different dealing with young people? I, I remember reading the, the beautiful model, Winnie Harlow, um, who has the skin condition vitiligo. She said she was bullied so bad that her parents um, pulled her out of school, which she says helped her self-confidence. Um, when you're dealing with young people at this very vulnerable age of identity, how do you approach them? So one of the things I always like to do is find them a support group. Yeah. I think that feeling like you're not alone, having a support system, and in the age of social media, like a lot of these patients, there's groups for everything. On TikTok, there's a group for like excessive sweating. There's a group for like neurofibromatosis. There's a group for vitiligo. Yeah. So having patients feel like they're not alone and also letting them know that their skin disease can actually be a strength yeah. and not a weakness. You know, and I know you deal with, as I said, severe skin disease issues, but even when you talk about aging, right, people say age gracefully. There's somebody in your office trying to get an appointment. You missed it. <laughs> I'm holding you up. I'm going to let you go in a minute. I got one more question. You know, when you have people who say age gracefully, in reality, aging is very hard. And it's, again, another one of those, the skin you're in, feeling defined by that. What is the life lesson you have for people? I think the biggest thing is we have to be more empathetic to each other's differences. Mm. We're more alike at the core. No matter if I have a lump or bump here, we all want to be accepted. We all want to leave out the house and feel our best self. We all want to be able to have a job and start dating and start living. So even though we're different, we're all the same. We have the same basic human needs. We all just want to feel accepted. And I'm hoping that through the show, people can get that feeling. Oh, that is beautiful. And I, I know that they will each and every day. Are, are you ever... Are you ever intimidated by a case or do you approach it with that strong will that we see? I'm going to help you figure this out. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Tamron. Every day I tell myself, 
Mercy, you have to put your big girl pants on. These people need you. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, how is this gonna happen? So literally, I have to have a pep talk with myself sometimes. Well, it like works. Those huge like homas. Oh, I have to talk to myself, and then I put my big girl pants on, and I just go in and just do it. I love it. Well, thank you, Dr. Mercy, for joining us. Congratulations on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. To see more extraordinary skin transformations, check out Dr. Mercy on TLC and Discovery Plus.